Hi, I'm Chris, and welcome to the Game Changer series. In this series, we're going to look at tools that change and improve the way that you work. So in today's episode, we're going to look at this, the Rail Square from Bench Dogs. So first of all, I'm just going to say that I don't actually know how this is packaged when you order one because I found out that they're two miles away from me, so I went and picked this up. Uh, you get a nice, neat little bag here, and inside it's the, the rail clamp itself, which connects with these cams, and then this piece here slides out, and that's to stop it tipping if you're resting it on the edge. But we'll have a look at that in a second anyway. And just see what else is in this bag. So you've got the calibration report here. Oh, and a nice shiny sticker. So I'll stick that on a uh, on my workbench when I make it. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. A portable workbench with uh, the micro jib dovetail clamps that will be. Uh, okay, so this is obviously the CAD drawing of, of this rail clamp and the calibration test. So I'm not going to look into that because let's be fair, I have no idea what it means. But it's accurate, apparently. Uh, and that's it. A nice little bag to keep it in. I mean, they do sell a sustainer. They sell four different options. I think one is the uh, the rail clamp on its own, like that. And look, bearing in mind, this is a Maffel one, but you can get them for Festool, Makita, um, that rail system, um, Evolution, Abauer. So many of them use that rail, but I actually prefer the Maffel rail, which I go into in another video, but it's a far superior to the Festool one. So option one is just the bench dog rail clamp. And then option two, I believe, comes with the, uh, the sustainer with a, a foam insert that fits that in. And then there's two other options that I'll put on the screen uh, because I'm not actually sure. If it, they do come with bench dogs, which I don't use anyway. So I'll put them on the screen so you can have a look. So let's get this thing fitted and see how it cuts. Right, so here's the Maffel track. It looks like it just slides into the little T slot underneath. Right, quick point to mention. If it's rocking like that on this bit, as I just discovered, it's because this isn't set in properly. It actually goes in two grooves there. So to disconnect this, it slides off like that. So you've got a groove there and a groove there. So they both want to slide into the track. So keep those cams, see on those cams you've got a flat piece there and a flat piece there. That's obviously for when you slide it on. Grab your track. You want to make sure. Ah, okay. So this right hand one is actually longer. So that obviously has to feed in first and then into that one. Well, it is smooth. But how smooth it is. And then the cams obviously pull it square. Wow, really impressive. So now, just sits there nicely like that. Lovely. So let's grab our square. Um, have a little check. Let's try and get you on the camera there. So according to this square, it is absolutely perfect. 
So we're going to see how it cuts. First of all, I'm going to show you why this is a game changer. So what I usually do is rip my material, <clears throat> rip the widths, so we have long lengths, um, and then cut them to length by cross cutting them, which I do with the rail saw, or the track saw, or the plunge saw, however you say it from where you're from. So what I used to do, if I just grab the Just grab this. <clears throat> so what I used to do is put the, uh, I'd get a drywall square like this, which isn't perfectly square. Put a mark here and a mark here, or you could just draw a line all the way along. And then I rest the, the track on there and cut it. But the thing is, this does take a lot of time when you keep doing it and you have to keep reaching for the square, keep doing it every single cut. And to be honest, unless you've got a really accurate drywall square, it's really not going to work. Um, and this isn't that accurate. And I found out as I'm going to put the cabinets together, it's not quite accurate enough. So I'm hoping this here will be a lot squarer, which it seems to be since I checked it. So what happens here is that obviously butts to the end and you'd line this edge up with your line. That's so all you need to do. You either hold it down or you can clamp it, which I never do. Unless I'm cutting something like a worktop that's, you know, a lot harder wood, then I will clamp it, but usually I just leave it like that. So this here, this function, you slide that up like that, and all that does is it stops it tipping. So that's on like that. And then we'll give it a cut. I'll find my tape measure, and we'll mark it up. So first things first, whenever you're buying cheap goods, or even if you rip something to length, the best thing to do is cut off the factory edge because they're either not perfectly square, like this one looks like is actually nowhere near square, uh, but it's also, you know, they've been in warehouses, they've been, you put them on the trolley, you chuck them in the back of the van, the edges do get damaged. So we're gonna give it a nice, fresh, clean edge and see how this holds up. Right, so it's all against there. Let's grab our trusty square that we know is square. And that is square, which is good to know. So let's flip this board round and cut something to length. Right, so you're over this side now, which can make my mark at 720. Now, a lot of you, especially you kitchen manufacturers, you'll know that 720 is a uh, height of a wall unit. Well, a lot of wall units, some are 900 and base unit, so this is going to be a side. So we just grab our rail and our bench dog jig. So we've lined it up with the line here that you can't see unfortunately because the saw is in the way, and we're going to give it a cut. But first we want to put Sacrificial board underneath to stop it all tipping. And we're going to give it a cut. Make sure that is square. Which it is. Give it a quick check. Oh, that's perfect. It's much better than my uh, drywall square I've been using. Just check the so seven twenty exactly. 
720. Perfect. As you can see on here, because this is for the Mafel track, it's got some nice anodized red cams. And you can get the anodized blue ones for the Boss track, which is the same track anyway. Um, and at the moment, they're doing a nice yellow and blue one for the Ukrainian flag, which I believe £10 goes as a fundraiser towards Ukraine. They also do this for the Festal tracks as well, which has different colours, um, but obviously I've only got the Mafel one. So here's a quick look at the underside of it. You see these bolts for these cams there. And the bolts do sit very, very slightly proud. Um, you know, but this obviously, if you're not going to have it overhanging the bench, the thing is you're going to still have sacrificial boards underneath to keep it up so you don't cut through your bench. Well, you'd hope so anyway. Obviously, there are designs out there where you wouldn't, but this, this does sit down ever so slightly. Um, but for myself, it's not really an issue. And then again, we have this here. You slide it out, tighten it down, and it keeps it from falling. Now, I'm really impressed. I think I paid £125 for this. Um, I was going to have to buy a new drywall square anyway, which were a decent, accurate drywall square. You're looking at sort of £30 anyway. However, you, you can't really order one online because that's what I did with this, uh, this Empire one here, is that ideally when buying any square, you know, even a square like this one, what you want to do is in the shop, you want to put it on something, on an edge of something, mark a line, even, you know, even if it's on the shelf in the shop, just you need to get an accurate square, otherwise it's pointless and you might as well not bother. So draw a line, flip the square over and bring it up to the line and you can draw another line. And if that line is parallel or pretty much on top of each other, as long as it's parallel, brilliant. That's what you want. If it's not, put the square back and get another one. Because if you're gonna buy a square that's not square, well, there isn't any point really. You might as well just do it freehand. So that's the problem with ordering things like that online, squares. I bought this, it had to come from America, I believe. It's all in Imperials, so I've had to stick a tape on it. I mean, I will keep this because it's great for marking out. You know, if I'm marking along, I think this is, I think it's about 1200 long, so. Obviously it's great where well, I've put these markings here so I can do, you know, if I need to mark every 100 mil, I put that on, you know, and mark along. Um, is it square? Not quite. It's okay for a short piece like, you know, what I just cut there, but if you're cutting something like a sheet of plywood that's 1200 wide, by the time you get to the other end, it's about three millimeters out, which is no good. If you're building a cabinet, that's three mils quite a lot, you know, especially from corner to corner in your cabinet. So, no, I'm, I'm very impressed with this. I'm glad I bought it, this uh, bench dog. Bringing precision to your work, it says. Where are we on the camera? Bringing precision to your work. Now that certainly has, and that's why it's featuring on this series of the Game Changers. So I suppose you want an affiliate code, don't you, to get this a bit cheaper? Yeah, I thought you might. So I'm going to list that down below. So when you go on their website, you can put the code in and you get a bit of a discount, which I'll put on the screen now. And it also helps me out. And this will be my first affiliate, actually. So I'm glad it's going to something that I'm really enjoying. And I paid for it myself as well before I reviewed it. Um, like I did say earlier in the video, they are just up the road from me, about two miles. In fact, it's about two doors away from my mate's workshop. Um, I didn't know this. They've only just moved there from another place. I didn't know they were from there, but now I do, which is great because I'm going to go back and get some more bits because it's just such great quality. Um, and when I was in there, although I did quickly, I just went up into the office to, to do the payment. I did see that they had the machines in one of the rooms downstairs, like engineering machinery. So they do actually build stuff there by the look of things, which is a, another great thing, you know, buying British. Um, unless obviously you're an American, of course, but there's still, you know, it's better than buying Chinese. So I'm really impressed with this. I'm definitely 
going to be investing in more bench dog tools. I don't have um, a workbench that uses bench dogs themselves. Um, but what I'm going to do in my next video, I'm going to show you what I do use, which is the micro jig match fit. And I'm going to use it on my miter station and possibly on my workbench. That is a really, really good investment. So I would subscribe to that. And there's a little bell somewhere down, down here. I don't know. Depends whether you're looking on the phone or on the PC or a tablet. Hit the bell. And then when I upload the next video, it will inform you, which is great. So what else is there to say about this? <clears throat> I paid 120. I think it's around that. And obviously there's postage which I didn't pay. Um, you can get the kit with a sustainer, which I think is about £30 more, but you get a proper sort of, I don't know, Vestal, Mafel, Makita type um, sustainer for it, which obviously clips onto the others. Um, you can get one with all the little dogs. If you've got like a, um, a Vestal MFT table, it clips in there, all the little dogs to line everything up square. Uh, but I, to be honest, I don't use any of that. Um, this is all I wanted really, a good accurate rail square, well square along there, I mean I didn't even know about this thing until I bought it, but what a game changer for me, whether it be for you, I think it will, I think it's definitely worth getting for that price, I mean the thing is with a lot of tool reviews, not just by me but anywhere on YouTube, Sometimes the price may seem a little high for things. Um, obviously, it depends whether you are a tradesman or you're a hobbyist. If you're, say, like a, a hobbyist, you just do it some weekends or, you know, you've retired. Maybe you don't have the same justification to spend certain amount on tools that someone like myself who does this for a job and every, every second counts. You know, I try to look for things all the time that make... Two differences, really, which is what this series is about, which is speeding up the process and increasing the accuracy. This is doing both. Um, obviously, it comes at price. You have to buy the item in the first place. But with the discount code, it should be a little bit cheaper. Um, but that's the thing. A lot of a lot of reviews are like that. You're gonna. It's completely different whether you're a tradesman, self-employed. Obviously, you get to claim back the tax. Or if you're a hobbyist, sometimes things can be a little, a little bit overpriced. Not overpriced as such, but you don't, you're, you're not investing. You're just using it um, for your own hobby, really. So, obviously, I wouldn't recommend a Mafel tracks or if you're just a hobbyist. And when I say retired, I mean you know you're not. You're not thinking of going self-employed and working for yourself in the future. If you are, then I recommend buying good quality tools because the thing is they'll last you for years and years and years. And a problem I made when I went self-employed is at the beginning, I got a lot of work quickly. So I was going and buying, like I bought an Abawa track saw from Screwfix. Absolutely useless. Um, my cuts were like a banana and I had to just get rid of it and get a decent one and I think you'll find that a lot and it is worth buying decent tools in the first place accurate tools um, you know but, but this video is about this bench dog rail clamp and it is solid obviously it comes with a little bag it will fit inside the rail bag um, it'll probably get scratched if if we put it in there but you can get the sustainer if you really want it uh, all in all yep Definitely go and buy one. Definitely worth it. It's speeding up the whole process for me anyway. So anyway, thank you very much.